In this video, I'll cover the basics of how framing for walls, floors, roofs, and decks work in Chief Architect. As I begin with wall framing, the program has different plan views to help manage layers for these specific views. I'll switch the plan view to the framing floor plan view. To build the framing, you'll find a toolbar for general framing and then the build framing option. You will also find the same tool underneath the framing menu and build framing. In the build framing dialog, you'll find several panels for different elements of the framing in Chief Architect. Let's begin with the wall framing and I'm going to turn on the automatic wall framing to begin with. The wall framing that is built will be based on your wall cavity thickness. Currently the walls that are on the outside of this house are 6 inch walls. Therefore it's going to use a 6 inch stud in that framing. You can change the stud thickness. In this case if I wanted to change it from 1.5 inches I could make that change as well as the spacing for the stud distance, you can change it down here for the on center amount. Wall framing includes a number of options for your wall connections. You'll see standard, reduced stud connections, laddered connections, as well as wall intersections, similar options for the intersections. Plate information, if you want to define your plate for the count, thickness, as well as the bottom information as well. Also in the blocking, you can include how the blocking will take place and then for angled walls how the mitering works and then a few options for your fill style information. Let me build the framing using all of these default settings. You'll see the framing appear in the 2D view and if I use the zoom tool and zoom in onto an area you'll see the wall framing and how it lays out into the wall. Under the 3D camera view there is a specific camera for the framing overview. In this view you can see all the framing that was just generated and how it lays out in the 3D view. Let me tile my views by pressing Shift F6 on the keyboard and let's take a look at some additional wall framing options. For the wall, if I click on the wall and come down into the program's lower menu, there is an open wall detail button. This will open up the information specifically for this framed wall. Note at the bottom it says view from the outside of the wall. The framing information in each wall can be manually adjusted and I will show you that process in just a minute. Let's take a look at the options that you can use with the program to automatically change the framing for you. Over in the 3D view I'm actually going to open up the layer display and turn on the windows so that I can actually do some editing on the windows. As I come down and turn on the layer for the windows and then I'll scroll around and select the window on the left side and let's double click on it and go into the window specification. On the left hand side of the panels you come down to framing. On an individual basis you can override the framing that is typical for all of your windows. At the top you'll notice that it has a use default which is using the default settings for the plan. If you uncheck that you can then come down, make changes for the type of lumber or type of item that you're going to use structurally above this. There's a number of items you can choose from. The thickness, a little wrench with a check mark means that it's using default. If you uncheck that, the check mark goes away and you can come in and type in the value. The count for the header and then the depth for the header. I'll show you where those are set in the openings span table in a moment. And then the header placement, if you want to change the header placement, it's going up to the exterior edge and it's also set to be at the top of the opening. If I were to change this floor to top and let's just subtract 24 inches from the floor to top, close the dialog, you can see that the framing automatically updates. We go back into the window and make the change on the framing panel one more time and we go to the top of the wall for vertical placement, update it, you can see that the header automatically goes snug up against the top of the plate. So while you can change the header information on a per object basis, you will also find that information in what's considered a similar tool to a span table. If we go back into our framing tools underneath the openings, you'll see the header size information and the defaults are set up to have four different spans and then the depth for each of those spans. If you find yourself using something 
different than this on your typical plans, you can make a change in here, save that in your template plan, and then as you go forward for future projects, it will then use that information you've put in here. The automatic wall framing that's generated is usually a great place to start. If you're working with a structural engineer and you need to make change to the wall framing, you can select any of these wall framing members, make a copy of them, slide them over, and position them as you need to. As soon as you make a manual change to any of the wall framing, the program will prompt you to turn off the automatic wall framing. At that point, if you move a window, it will require you to manually update the framing, which is an easy process inside the program. Let's toggle over to the floor plan view, tap on the wall, and you can manually update the framing using a per object basis. If I manually update that framing, it will remove this added stud that I put in here. Another option you can do is to lock the framing. If you've made specific framing changes and you don't want the program to override it, double click to open up the wall. And on the structure panel inside of the wall, down towards the bottom, is the option to retain wall framing. That means when you go to rebuild any of the framing, it will not override the framing. You can think of this as locking the wall framing. If you do need to make changes to it, just uncheck that button, go in and make the changes to your wall framing, and then you can regenerate it as you need to. On the structure panel inside the wall, there are also several other options that you can change for the wall framing. These settings can help you generate the framing through the automatic framing. For double walls, there are framing options at the rim joist, wall intersections, floor platform. If you're going to be ballooning walls, there's an option to balloon walls. Also, a few other options at the ceiling, again, to stop at the ceiling above, balloon through, and then hang on the platform. These are great options to help in the automatic framing to avoid any manual framing that you may need to make. To add the wall blocking, it's easiest to do that in the wall detail. You'll find a tool specifically for wall blocking. It's called wall bridging in the program. When you use this tool, you'll see that it's set up to be staggered. You can set up in your framing defaults underneath framing and then underneath the framing, if you come into the wall towards the bottom of the dialog is blocking for how you'd like to perform that on your walls. Currently it is set to stagger. Let's move on and take a look at floor framing for this structure. I've got a foundation level and then a second story in this design. Let's begin with the foundation floor framing. Underneath the build menu, I'm going to come down to the framing and build framing. Specifically for the foundation is an option to automatically build the floor framing as well as the ceiling framing. For the purpose of the video, I'm going to wait to build the ceiling framing. So I'm going to come down, I'm going to build the subfloor for floor one, and there's a checkbox down here to build the framing. The floor structure is already set up. If you click the edit button, this will show you the two components that make up the floor structure, the subfloor and then the fur framing. This is defined when you build the floor itself. If you need to make a change to the floor cavity, it's best to do that in your floor defaults. You can also do it on a room by room basis. Be very careful. It's best to keep it for the entire floor, but possible to do it on a room by room basis. In the floor framing, you'll find similar things for the spacing, the joist depth, the rim joist width, and then the rim joist type, and then how beams and blocking occur. Let's go ahead and build the floor framing. In the 3D view, you can see the framing, that floor framing. In the plan view, if I use the floor indicator and move down a level, this is where the floor framing is going to show up in your plan view. Let's take a look at making some changes to the floor framing. On the right hand side of this partition, I want to change the floor framing to go perpendicular to where it's currently going. There is a tool underneath the build framing called the joist direction tool. And I'm going to just click and drag and create a joist direction line. There's also a bearing line that you can draw that will then cause the joist to either lap or butt. You will also find that in the wall itself. If I double click on this wall, on the structure panel of the wall is to mark walls as a bearing wall and then I need to rebuild the framing. Remember, my floor framing is not on automatically, so I'll just go back into the build framing underneath the foundation and build framing. So you'll notice that it changed the joist direction for both areas, 
If you want to change the joist direction only in one area, you can draw another joist direction line, go back in, rebuild the framing, and then you have a mix of framing directions. The program also has trusses for both floors and roofs. If I go in and delete all of the floor framing members, let's come into the floor and ceiling frame tool. With the joist tool, I'll hold my shift key down, click and drag a marquee around those joists I want to remove, then press the delete key. There is a floor truss tool, and to draw the floor truss, just come in and click and drag to generate the truss, select the truss, use the multiple copy tool in the lower edit menu, just verify what the distance is for trusses. In this case, it's set to be 24 inches on center. Click and drag those trusses across. And then in the 3D view, you can see exactly where those trusses are. Maybe a nice option to run your HVAC. You also might want to expand the cavity. Right now, it's about 12 inches. If you needed to set this up as a 20 inch cavity, then do that in your build floor. And then the trusses will fill the cavity based on the floor platform you have defined. Let's take a look at the roof framing as we zoom out. Roof framing again is a function of the roof planes that you have on. If I switch my layer set back to just the camera view layer set, you can see that the roof planes are already in place and you need to have those before you build your roof framing. Let's switch our layer set back to the 3D framing set. You'll find the roof framing tools underneath the framing, build framing, in the roof framing is the option to automatically build the roof framing. Anytime you update the roof, the framing will automatically change. The same is true when you have automatic wall framing on, the wall framing automatically updates. Down below in the roof section is where you can specifically build the roof framing in a one-time fashion. You can change the spacing, the outlook spacing, the blocking style. When you build your roofs, they typically are made up of different layers. Since I've already built the roof, you can see that the surface, the structure using a 2x10, the ceiling information, the soffit information is all defined at the time when you build the roof. And that's really where you define the platform information. In the roof size information, you can specify the width of the rafter. Up above, it says that it's determined by the roof structure that's using the 2x10 above. The ridge information, lookout, fascias, and blocking information you can specify when you build the roof. As the roof framing is built, this is a nice option to give you a 3D view and may be a nice way to show your client. Many roofs today are truss framed and the program does include a truss tool. Let's go ahead and click undo one time here and take a look at the process of adding the truss framing. Let's move back over into the floor plan. For the truss framing, I'm going to move up to the second floor and then I'm going to switch the save plan view specifically to the framing roof plan view. It's very faint, but you can actually see the roof planes that are displayed in this particular view. There is a tool specifically underneath the roof framing tool to add for roof trusses. When you click and drag the roof truss, as I do right in this area right here over the end wall, I'll take this truss and use the multiple copy tool. Remember the interval for my trusses is defined at 24 inches when I make a copy of this. Move my cursor over it, slide the trusses down until we reach the end wall. Notice that it's giving me a message that the trusses are too close together so it can't make a truss. If you zoom in on this area right here, my spacing didn't work out close enough. I'll just use the point to point move and position it right over the end of the wall. Using the point to point move, Zoom in, click on the end of the truss, click over the end of it, and now that's exactly positioned on the end of the wall. That truss is still selected. I'm going to come over to the other side, hold my shift key down, grab the two end trusses, use the open option, and I'm just going to confirm that they are both end trusses and reduced gable. Note there are several other types of trusses that you can mark when using the truss tool. Now, since I've previously built the wall framing and you move up a level into the attic, you see the two end gable walls. And in this case, I want to remove the framing out of those gable walls since I have end trusses. Using the general framing tool, I'll hold my shift key down and then click and drag around all of these framing members and then press delete. And then as you go back into the 3D view, you can see the trusses that have been added up on the second floor. When you go back in to build the framing, and we specifically come down and build the roof framing, 
The roof framing will build over the garage and fill in any spaces that may be missing. Notice that I don't have any fascia information out on the truss. When I use the build framing, it will automatically fill in that space. And in some cases, you may want to delete a few of those framing members. This is a nice way that the program will help where you've drawn manual trusses and then use the automatic tool to fill in additional things such as the fascia boards or stick frame other areas of the design. Let's move on and take a look at the deck framing. As I rotate around and look at the deck, you can see that I already have the framing on. Let's move back over into the floor plan view. In this design, the deck was drawn on the main floor, and you can see on floor one, this area back here is actually the deck area. Using the deck railing tool was created the deck, and then on floor zero, or the foundation, is where the framing is created. Let's switch our save plan view into the, the framing floor plan view, and you can see that those layers are in fact turned on in this view, and then in the 3D view you can see all of those framing members. Since the deck framing is automatic, you can manually manipulate the framing just like you can all framing members. And if you need to make a change, you can go up into the deck room itself. Just double click in the room. Notice that the room type is defined as a deck. There is a deck specific panel where you can specify the information for the deck planking and then the joist information. As far as the deck support, there is information for the beams. There is an edit button near the beams and posts. When you click on the edit button, the program will then prompt you for the specifics for the deck information. Much like all of the other framing members, you can come in here and specify that information. On the deck panel itself is an option to automatically regenerate the deck framing. If you come in and you move the walls of your deck around, when it's on automatic, the framing will automatically regenerate. There's also an option to keep the deck framing if the deck room is deleted. For whatever reason you do that, this will then allow you to retain or remove the framing as you need to do that. Well, that wraps up this video on Framing Basics. To learn more about framing, please see the video playlist with detailed videos on each segment of framing, as well as the built-in help file. Thanks for watching.